I am a statistic. I am the one out of three who will go to college. I am the three out of four who don't do drugs. I am the five out of nine who have a job. I am the seven out of eight who is not a teenage father. I am the eleven out of twelve who won't drop out of high school. I have a purpose, and that's a fact I'm proud of. That, that's how I start. That video is called I Am a Statistic. It's by the Mystic Valley NAACP. And what you saw is the narrative that I'm about, creating a new narrative for boys and young men of color. We all too well know the negative narratives, but when you hear the statistics about who's succeeding, how well they're doing in school, that's what we need to keep in front of us. So in this day and age of, of names that have now become familiar, Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, Freddie Gray. It's important that we, who are about the business of educating all students, and in my case, boys and young men of color, lift up another narrative. You know, one that really lets our boys know what is possible for them to do, what's possible for them to become, who they can become. So I'm here today saying that I'm looking for the next set of freedom fighters, leaders who are liberators, because as my colleagues have talked about, liberating and unshackling chains that are sometimes too often are on the ankles of our boys and young men of color is something that has to be broken. I'm looking for leaders who want to create, want to develop the next Antonio Maceo. If you don't know who he is, he's a black Cuban general. I'm looking for those who want to create and develop the next Frederick Douglass. I'm looking for those leaders who want to develop the next Geronimo, the next, next Nelson Mandela. I'm looking for change agents. I'm looking for people who don't talk about it, but are about it. That's the work that I'm uh, called to do. That's what drives me. That's what gets me up at night. That's what keeps me up at night. James Baldwin, in his letter to his nephew from the book, my dungeon shutter said the following, the limits to your ambition were thus expected to be settled. He was writing to his nephew, also named James, 15 years old. You were not expected to aspire to excellence. You were not expected to make peace. You were, you were expected to make peace with mediocrity. Gift from God. I usually start my presentations with this because I always ask the question, what do you see? Well, you see a baby, a brown baby. The question is, you see him, and you see him nurtured and held. The question is, what do you hope for him? What do you expect from this brown baby? Do we expect him to be a gift from God, or do you expect him to be a minister to society? And a lot of the expectations of what we lay on children from the very first day they come out of the womb can set the case for them for the rest of their lives. Now, in the case of my two parents, one who was from the Deep South who never was able to read a day in his life, and the other who graduated from high school who was a lover of poetry, particularly Langston Hughes, who read to me nightly, Mother to Son, to the point where I said, Mom, stop reading it to me. But I got it after a point where she was trying to say that there'll be obstacles, there'll be rugs that are torn, there'll be things in my way, but I had to persevere. And so, you know, Nina Simone, to be young, gifted, and black. Again, exhorting what, uh, is cap what, what our, our boys and young men are capable of doing, what our children are capable of doing, if we believe in them. They're gifted, they're talented. And at the end of the rainbow, for me, was a graduation, which we want to see all of our boys and young men aspire to, those plateaus, those benchmarks of success in, in life. Good looking guy, too, by the way. <laughs> and then I took up the, the call to teach, you know, because I think I can't think other than being a parent, the greatest call there is is to teach. And so that drives me, that gets me up, that makes me persevere, that makes me realize that I am here planted on this earth, on this solid ground, to help to create the next generation of leaders who liberate. And Parker Palmer, if you cannot see them, you cannot teach them well. We all know one of my mentors, James Comer, used to say it over and over again, relationships matter. It matters when we know who's in front of us. It matters when we see the children. It matters when we see their greatness. It matters when we see their full potential. So, you know, the question, what, do, what does it mean to reimagine schooling for boys and young men of color? What must we do? A lot of it you already know. The secret is, is no secret. 
You know, you'll hear it from my colleagues, you'll hear it from those who follow, high standards, rigorous teaching, being culturally competent. You know, all those things that we know, the literature, the effective schools literature, Ron Edmonds said, has been said over and over again. So now the question is, are we ready to do it? Are we willing to do it? Are we charged to do it? I believe that there are four, at least four factors for success for boys and young men of color. One is a strong sense of identity. So to that end, we do a rites of passage program in my program. Because we all have gone through a rites of passage. We formalize the process. So what does it mean to take a boy from a boy to become, to develop to be a young man, to develop to be a man? And what we say is that we should tie identity formation with academic pursuits. It's not separate. Once a young man knows who he is, can ad identify his heritage, his roots, he's more likely to say, I want to succeed. I want to do well. He's purposeful. And he's more likely to want to associate with a positive posse, other peers that want to do well as well. You know, this again, this is not rocket science. When the research says it, it backs it up, and you who are practitioners can see that. Growing confidence in one's ability to achieve. You know, Ron Edmonds, uh, Jeff Howard talks about efficacy. You know, when you really know who you are, you know what you're able to do. Again, so when my mother and father told me that I am somebody, I could do it, that don't accept mediocrity, that was my charge. That was my calling to go to do what I could do. When I went to Lincoln University, you had Professor Philip Foner, we talked about teachers, who taught me everything I wanted to know about Frederick Douglass because he was the residing expert on Frederick Douglass at that time. I also had Professor James Farmer, who told me to go south, young man, go south. So I landed in Belzoni, Mississippi in 1966 to take up the mantle for a movement. I'm about being able to be a part and build a movement. And I encourage all of us to think about movement building. The last one, a willingness to be mentored. Even at my old age now, I'm still open to being mentored, to being guided, to being uh, challenged, being charged to do what I need to do on behalf of this work and this movement. So I have a, a last minute video that will also speak to you. And so we go right to that. And so ladies and gentlemen, we are super excited to be here for the ninth annual gathering of COSBOC. It is everybody's business to educate our children, particularly our young black boys. We want to make this the most exceptional gathering of leaders that ever could be. I'm so pleased that this is a coalition that doesn't refer to African American boys as at risk. At risk means at danger. We're talking about boys of promise. We're going to look and change that language to boys of promise. We are in the movement. I've said this two days ago, since yesterday. And anybody who knows me knows that this is movement work. Not minute work, movement work. And last night we were told that in order to be a part of a movement, you got to be tenacious, you got to be persistent, you got to be courageous, you got to be relentless, you got to persevere. And I always want to know, just by a show of hands, you can stand up and do whatever. How many movement people do I have here with me today? All right? Okay. We are about the business of changing the narrative for boys and young men of color. On our watch. With our boys, y'all, we got a lot of work to do. I mean, we have some serious work to do in this nation. And, and, and the work is not for the faint at heart. We cannot let the fear suffocate us. We have to use it to do that which we know we need to do for our boys, for our communities, and for our country. What, what drives me is this daily opportunity to create a movement, you know, in the, in the spirit of past movements. Because I know I need, we need everybody on board. You know, the very lives of our uh, young people are at stake. The health of our nation is at stake. So again, I charge you, uh, for those who uh, want to sign up to become leaders for liberation, uh, join me.
Thank you.